today we are talking uh we're gonna talk about trainers making you feel guilty mainly yeah trainers that make you feel like shit let's put yeah. just put it out there <laughs> like, I, didn't, I didn't want to go so strong but <laughs> yeah that's all welcome to the new episode of she gets sit done make sure to hit subscribe comment or like we hope you love this week's episode enjoy Hello, welcome to episode five of our podcast, She Gets Sit Done. I am Laura. And I'm Sana. And today we are talking, uh, we're going to talk about trainers making you feel guilty. Mainly. Yeah, trainers that make you feel like shit. Let's put yeah. just put it out there. <laughs> like, I didn't, didn't want to go so strong, but <laughs> that's, yeah. That's what it is, right? So, um the reason we got to this topic is because one of my clients slash friends sent me a reel a few weeks ago from a dog trainer that um listed like a few things about owners need to stop making excuses for their dogs not getting enough exercise or something like that. And then he was basically saying dogs should have two hours was it two hours I can't remember like two hours of exercise every day you should stop with just walking them for 20 minutes and think your dog is fine like I think it was something along those lines and then he said good ways to exercise your dog is like throwing a ball like playing fetch and swimming and uh oh, the run- bicycle ride. running next to the bike and like it was it was quite shitty I think for uh, anyway she she messaged me and she said hey what do you think of that because it makes me feel like I'm not doing enough with my dog and I feel guilty do I need to do more with him and she also said I, she unfollowed him because this was like real number whatever that she was like man every time I see his reels he makes me feel like I'm not treating my dog right and I think this is like a trend on tiktok instagram facebook that that i think there's a lot of dog trainers out there that forget that there's a lot of humans that own dogs that are not trainers and don't have the passion for training and they just want to live with their dog and that's totally fine so i think we love to dig into that topic (laughs) oh yeah so one of the reasons why i uh i'm a pet dog trainer uh it's because of that because when i mm. pet the yeah. trainer <laughs> uh because i started like yeah so i became a dog trainer because when i was a kid we had a dog and he was really bad and we thought the dog was bad and as i grew up i realized it was we did all the wrong things and that made me become a trainer that's like the really short version mm. and then i was all like okay i'm gonna do competitions and my dogs are gonna be like super trained and my first trainer was a military trainer like he trained malinois so i went in my dog training life with like really highly skilled trained dogs and and we were asking all of those things about these dogs and then later down the track i realized yeah but all that training, all that obedience, all that super cool stuff, I cannot apply that knowledge I have with the lady that has a cavoodle that pees on the carpet. It's like, um, yeah, you're not going to take your cavoodle on a two-hour bike ride, so it stops peeing on the carpet. <laughs> well, dog won't uh, have any pets carpet. left. <laughs> Yeah, so so that's when I kind of like, well, before that, I, I sort of thought, you yeah, it doesn't make us bad people if we have dogs that are not super highly obedience trained. Mm. Um, and when I see postal, yeah, I, I had that same feeling as your client. When I see posts of other people doing all these super cool things with their dogs, and even there was a trend at one point where trainers were saying if you if you are a dog trainer and you haven't won any competition you're not a good trainer you shouldn't be training dogs out there and that made me feel really shit yeah yeah and I was I had been a dog trainer for like eight years already and then I hear that I I feel targeted no I feel Mm. like okay I haven't won any titles that's true so that makes me a bad trainer I shouldn't be training dogs so imagine how people would feel also with all these 
uh, things that they see online by so-called specialists yeah. saying, yeah, what you do is bad. Yeah, I definitely felt the same as you in regards to if you didn't title your dog, if you didn't win any competitions with your dog, then you're not a good dog trainer. Like, I'm not competitive at all. And going into a competition environment, it's horrible. I hate it. So doesn't mean my dog can't do certain things that they do in competitions. It's just I don't want to go and spend my whole weekend at a competition and feeling stressed all day long right so there is the dog trainer side but then I think when you follow dog trainers on social media and you have a dog you need to be aware there is two different types of dog trainers and they have different goals and that's okay like it's totally fine both trainers are good trainers possibly like I don't know I can't say that every dog trainer on the internet is great and need it you know but There is the sport dog people and there is the pet dog people. And if you have a sport dog trainer, but you just want your dog to be a good dog in the house and you have no ambition to do agility or to have competition healing or to do like bite work with your dog, if that's not your ambition, then there is a lot of things that the sport dog person would say that would fuck up your dog potentially yeah because Mm -hmm. what they want so in general what you you and i train a lot of pet dogs and our top goal for most of those pet dogs is calmness in the house like how can i have my dog be less excited and be not eating the furniture and how can i make him calm when people arrive and not jump on me yeah so those are the things that we like to work on and we work on mostly i would say but a sport dog person would be teaching you and your dog to do those things more because they want that they want more drive they want more energy they want more jumping and they want more barking if you do like schutzhund or something like that yeah so You need to have a look at those type of trainers and then think, hey, does this actually suit my goal? It's like, I want to learn Spanish, but I'm listening to an Italian teacher. You know, if you're going to learn Spanish, (laughs) you're going to learn Italian. It's going to be useless. Yeah. So that's, I mean, I think that's one of the main things that are an issue online, like finding that divide. Yeah, I think, and uh, again, we are always... Now, more than ever, we're exposed to so much information, so much stuff out there that it's very difficult for everyone to to be like, OK, this is good information. This is not good. This is this doesn't apply to me. And mm. so but the one thing I think is important is and I try my hardest to do that is that when I make a post or when I make a video or a reel or whatever, I try to talk about something that will make other people's life a bit better that would be helpful you know what I mean like okay if I'm gonna say yeah so this is what I do with my dogs and usually it works for me because now I have this but I try not to go if you don't do this with your dog your dog's gonna be is you know it's no wonder your dog's not listening to you you know like it's there's ways and ways to say it and I feel like we see a lot of that sort of guilt trip uh yeah it's uh, very my way or the highway isn't it like and i think from a dog trainer's perspective there's a lot of dog trainers that get into dog training because they love dogs and you will i mean and this from the back end right you hear a lot of dog trainers saying i don't like humans i don't like to work with people those are often not good dog trainers that do one-on-one sessions. They're often good at boot camps or um, board and trains where you don't have to work with people. But most of our job is teaching you how to teach your dog. And I think that a lot of passionate, like, and let's say it, like they're often just very passionate trainers of their own dogs, forget that if you're just a pet dog owner that wants to have a nice companion that they can take for a walk, they don't want to spend two hours a day training their dog. And I think you don't have to. 
I don't train my dog two hours a day, man. They're lucky sometimes they get ten minutes a day. <laughs> Yeah, and exactly, yeah. like, and, and, and not everyone has the same uh, view of what, you know, their companionship with, with their dog is going to be. Um, me, for example, uh, my, when I got my dog, which I waited 10 years to have a dog, when I finally had him, I was in that mindset of, yeah, my dog's going to be a champion, we're going to get titles. And I really listened to all the trainers that were in that in that area like you know sports dog trainer so i did all of those i follow all the advice and i created a monster like mm -hmm. i love my dogs to bits but he is a monster like he would be the best he would win titles he would learn everything he would do like all that fancy healing if we had gone that way but we didn't and now i'm stuck with a dog that has a super super high motivation to work all the time and like it's taking me years and years and years to undo that thing that's it and boy do i regret it <laughs> yeah and and it, that is that's exactly the, yeah hitting the nail on the head right like you need to have a look at what your goal is and does that suit your lifestyle and if you're like oh i don't want a super energetic dog then stop following every single tip that a sport dog trainer might be giving you then again there's nothing wrong with sport dog trainers before everyone will start coming at us yeah it's just does that fit in your lifestyle and then even more so for laura and me i feel like we are lifestyle trainers yeah so a lot of beat like a lot of sport dog trainers or the trainers that do say like oh you need to do 20 minutes of place every day and you need to teach your sits and your downs and your, your dog has to have perfect this and that like I'm not like that at all um that's not to say I don't teach sits downs and all that kind of obedience to dog owners and dogs it's just I love to just focus on teaching a dog manners so my dog can behave even if I don't tell him to go in a sit or in a down like, I shouldn't have to tell my dog to not eat the pizza off the coffee table because my dog knows the rules for that because we worked on impulse control. More so than, well, I told him to sit and he's not allowed to leave the sit. So if he breaks the sit, he's going to eat the food. You know? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> there are ways. There are ways. But yeah, and for example, I am, um, I do a lot of boarding at my house. So there's always mm. lots of dogs in my house. And a lot of people tell me what, that when their dogs go back home after staying one or two weeks with us, yeah, they behave better. And but I didn't do anything. Like I don't run a regime of all right. So now we're gonna do the twenty minute walk, and we're gonna go on a bike ride, and now we're gonna do this training session. It's not like that. Like my life is so busy, the dogs just live there, and and all I do is I set up the rules. And like, you cannot do this, but you can do that, basically. So I that's, I lay out the rules. This is allowed. Yeah. This is not. This is allowed. And during the, the 10 days that the dog is here, that's what they do. And yeah, and when they go home, for the first part of when they won't go back home, that's what they do. They're like, oh, at Laura, we used to do that. So I'm like, I'm okay. And then <laughs> that's when it changes. But that's a different thing. Yeah, but, yeah, but that's the lifestyle, that. right? You tell them, it's this lifestyle. is how we live here. And these are the rules yeah. you should follow because these are the rules not because yeah. i tell you go lie on that bed and don't move and the moment yeah. you're off the bed you're going to make the wrong choices yeah so i like i like to train i don't know if we can call it training but i don't for example I don't, i'm not very training. big on play oh yeah places i can do it but i don't i'm not big on that because i like to teach the dogs that if they're free to walk in the house they can just decide to drop wherever they want yeah. as long as they're not being disruptive so to me that's more important than a 20 minute place uh yeah, but I'll again a 20 minute it, place yeah uh, it suits my lifestyle and i think it's nicer for a dog to know you know what they are not allowed to do and everything else is okay than mm -hmm. to be told you can only do this one thing yeah so anyway but we digress <laughs> No, I don't think we're digressing. I think that's exactly what I wanted to talk about because 
I don't know. I, I do feel like when you go online that there will be lots and lots of things about this is how you make your dog heal. And this is how you make your dog do this. Like, yeah, those tricks are cool, but they're not going to help you with your dog stealing food off the counter or with your dog fighting with another dog in the house. You know, like those type of things or being kind to your kid. Like if your kid, if your dog is growling at your child, a sit isn't going to fix that problem. We need to mm. work on other stuff. And that's where you get your impulse control things and um, your boundaries and your rules. And hey, let's l use a drag line. Like, and talking about that and showing that, I think. Yes, yeah, I agree. It's mu much more beneficial to to be shown what you can do yeah, than to be told what you're, you're not doing right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think that's the trend, right? Like the the whole... Oh, let's look at loosely walking and how people can put you in the ground for using the wrong equipment, the wrong equipment. Yes, I don't use, I would not use a harness or I would not use a front clip harness, but I'm not going to tell you it's wrong. Like even if people contact me or they want to do my loosely walking course, I just say, look, you can use whatever tool you want. But I prefer this one. But if you can make it work on a harness, it's totally fine. Um, instead of ridicule someone for their choices. I think that's yeah. really bizarre. Yeah, I agree. And like you, people don't know, you know, no, don't know. if you don't know, you, you go to the shop and they recommend you something and that's what you get, you know. Exactly. So yeah, most of the time, you know, when we rock up to a first session with people, they always in my in my opinion they always have the wrong equipment anyway the wrong equipment in my opinion you know yeah, so exactly. i go there and they're like yeah my my dog's not work, not walking or he, he runs out of of the house or whatever and i'm like okay so what are you using this stuff mm -hmm. ah you know but i i try to like never tell people oh yeah no wonder it's not working for you look at this shit yeah. you know it's it's not like that like i like to suggest to people okay let's try with my yeah equipment but yeah, then how goes. how are you supposed to learn if you put down straight away or yeah. feel guilty like i currently have a client and they're lovely but the trainer before they went to me they went to like a puppy class and it's a it's a like a a cross of like a boxer and some herding dog and it could be all kinds of things so it's an energetic dog and that trainer told them they needed to bring the dog back to the SPCA because it needed at least two hours of exercise and otherwise he would go crazy, destroy the house and become a cat killer. And that's from a puppy class, like a, a public puppy class where, where the dog was just wild on lead. I mean, this happens to me every time I start a puppy class. Like, that's just puppies. And mm -hmm. um, the owners listened to that. And they brought the dog back to SBCA yeah. for 10 days. And then after 10 days, they got it back because they were like, actually, did we make the right choice? And this dog is lovely to work with. Like, I, I think dog trainers need to understand that the impact their attitude has on owners, if you put them in the ground for something that they just don't know and that's the same like if you find an account like that that makes you feel shit just unfollow them because yeah that one person isn't necessarily the truth like you might hear me say something on my instagram channel and be like fuck that's bullshit all right if you think that that's okay you don't have to agree with everything that i have to say or laura has to say or whatever person you you find on instagram yeah yeah you're not supposed to oh, and i think so yeah and like you know oh, i can i lost what i was gonna say <laughs> I, I talk to yeah mine. but basically if i think if someone yeah making someone feel bad about their choices like who's gonna who's gonna feel like they want to call a trainer after they've made feel so bad about what they did like you know and you can see it. Some people come and they are very sheepish and they're like, oh, we let them go on the bed. Uh, oh, you know? yeah, I get that and too. And I'm like, look, it's fine. It's okay. 
Yeah. I don't like unless your dog has a real aggression issue and he's actually attacking you on your own bed yeah, or resource guarding. If, if, yeah, if your dog's issue is pulling too much on leash when they go out for walks, I don't think it's a problem that they sleep on the bed with you. You know what I mean? Like, but this is such a <clears throat> that's a classic, right? It's like yeah. the classic thing that you hear all the time. Oh, your dog should never be on the furniture if you want them to listen to you. Mm. And I agree to a point, but like, it's not, that's not, the, that's not the reason why your dog is not listening to you, you know? Um, so I feel like, yeah, people hear so much about all these things they're doing wrong that then they don't feel comfortable telling you what they're actually doing with their dog because they're afraid that you're going to judge them or you're going to be like, oh, you're stupid. <laughs> of course your dog is. Of yeah, course your uh, dog is like this. That's so I think, yeah. yeah. You're right. <clears throat> If uh if you hire a dog trainer and immediately they sort of make you feel that way, like like they make you feel like you made all the wrong choices and that you're stupid and that, oh my god, how are we gonna fix that? So find I think, someone else. Yeah, that's that's it's a red flag because it means mm. it's you're not gonna work well with that person because they're already like judgmental of you, you know, and like no one is perfect and we all judge and stuff, but for me, for example, um, when I, I I work with people or when I post my stuff on Instagram, I really am very conscious about the way people will feel when they hear Same. the thing I say or when they read the thing I, re I wrote. Mm. Because I think that's the one way to get people to be more perceptive of what you have yeah, to say. Yeah, kindness. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I think yeah, there's so much videos out there of people telling you what you need to do. And if you don't do it, you're doing it wrong. There's it's that's not possible. It There is no like there are so many ways to do so many things. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to have someone telling you if you don't do this, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, it's just you need to find what works for you. And if you find a trainer that is able to see how your lifestyle is and what you need and from then work you into what you need to change without making you feel bad because you didn't do the right things yeah. i think that you're on to something better <laughs> i think so too and i think it might even be a good question to ask beforehand like when you start with a trainer like oh how much homework are you going to give me or uh, or what you know because I know that sounds silly because we don't want to not do homework but if someone is already saying in an email oh we need to change your whole lifestyle yeah then yeah. that is probably not going to be the trainer for you because no one wants to change their whole lifestyle yeah and yeah no I'm gonna leave it at that because yes there are reasons sometimes why we say those things but if someone is dumping with you with 10 different things straight away, you're not going to do it. <laughs> well, you're not, right? Like if someone would come into my house and they would be like, all right, so your dogs are not allowed on the bed anymore. They're not allowed on furniture. You only can hand feed them. You need to train them an hour a day. You need to walk them an hour a day. Like I'd give up before you finish talking about that whole list. Yeah. And if... Yeah. if if they make it seem like that's what you need to do to have a good dog, find a different dog trainer because there are other ways. You really, yeah. your dog should be an addition to your life and not become a whole day task to complete to have a well behaved dog. At least yeah. that's what I think. And of course, there's different levels of things that people will need because some people yeah. will call a trainer because they just had a puppy and they just want to know how to do things right. Or there are people that call us because they already have issues. And then there are people who, ha who have extreme issues mm -hmm. that is kind of a life and death situation. So, of course, you, you need yeah. to... Act Absolutely. accordingly, yeah. If if someone has an extreme case and the only way to save that dog is that to radically change the way you're living, the trainer will tell you that. But we're talking extremes here. But for the majority of people, sort of in the middle, you should be able to see change in your dog by only changing one or two things at a time, and then you can add them. This is the way I that's I, it. I like to do baby things, steps. Yeah? Baby steps. So so yes, you. 
um, I learned that the hard way. I used to do a one one time sessions. Remember those days? Mm -hmm. So I would go and see a person and I would be like, okay, this is your one session. And I would used to do that because I was like, okay, I can see all the problems and I can mm -hmm. see everything that needs to change. But they only paid for one session. So I've got to give them the whole everything information in one session. And I would do this huge list of, okay, if you stop doing this, if you start doing that, if you do this, do, 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 do that, your dog will be better. And it's not, it was, I don't think it was wrong. It's just like in one it session. It was too much. It's just yeah. too much. Exactly. So, so yeah. people need like... time to adjust, right? It's the same if you want to lose weight. And yeah. and it's hard to, to change everything. If you have a dietitian that tells you, all right, well, you can't eat anything anymore except cucumbers. Yeah, you're probably not going to be very successful instead of yeah. saying like you can eat every vegetable and every type of meat, but you might have to eat half of the carbs and then next month we'll cut out some fats or whatever. I'm just, yeah. And then we yeah. add the gym, but we're only starting with 10 minutes at the gym. I'm not going to say, all right, you need to work out two hours a day because people will be like, fuck this. I don't want to do it. Yeah. This is too hard. Build yeah. You build up to it. Yeah, it. and it's exactly the 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 thing we're trying to discuss is is that like if you see trainers out there and they, everybody that is a dog trainer started because they love dogs mm -hmm. and some of them because they love people but we get lost in the way like you know people get annoyed and people get like a, like I was like okay we want to give you all the information you need to do this if well you're not intended. doing it yeah yeah it's yeah. well intended to start with but it just I think it just gets like out of hand and and then and then yeah a lot of people get lost in they forget to check that what they're saying is hurtful or or like makes people feel like they're you know Definitely. and we're probably guilty of that as well oh, yeah know, i sometimes say things perfect. and i'm like oh maybe i shouldn't have said that <laughs> but... maybe i went too strong on that one <laughs> a little bit yeah and then yeah. i think also having a look at teaching styles um i think that's where a lot of the trainers that will say like if you don't do this yeah then you're an idiot yeah like i think yeah, that I like is that. more of a reflection on that they can't teach properly because i mean i am from a teaching background so i feel like that's definitely one of my strong points so i can see or someone doesn't understand it well then i'll try to explain it this way or we'll try it a little bit different and then after a session i send homework with written and handouts and i've got my youtube videos that i send because i know when you're in a session you're concentrating really hard and then the session is done and you forget half of the things the trainer said if they don't send you something to help you remember even if it's just dot points we worked on this this and this make sure to practice that then i think that's not beneficial for your growth either you need yeah. You need to have some pin because I can't remember everything that I'm told when I go and talk oh for to sure, yeah. Someone I went yeah I went from giving too much homework that people couldn't do. Yeah. Then I was like okay that's not realistic. And then I was I went through a period where I didn't give any homework. But then I realized no that's not good. People need to have something to hang on yeah. to. <laughs> so now yeah I'm not I'm not saying I've reached perfection, but you know like we 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 get better. And like now that. that that's what I try to do now is that I give people two or three things to work on or to stop doing or to start doing. Mm. And then I can see it when we see when we meet again if they've done it or not. Because that's there's that. anything you do or you stop doing it in your house with your dog will provoke a change. Like that's that's hundred percent sure. And I think one of the things that is coming up a bit more on, on social media now is that training your dog is not just doing a five minute or 10 minute training session. You're training your dog all day, except it's indirect training. It's telling them, don't sit there, sit over here. It's don't come in the kitchen because I'm cooking. It is go sit on your bed because I don't know, the kids just got home and I don't want you to jump on them. Like sticking to those rules like sitting down maybe even with your family and saying like, what are the rules for the dogs? And sticking to those, that's dog training. Yep. That is what's going to get you a good dog. That's why the dogs at Laura's house behave so well because she sticks to the rules and 
she repeats the rules. It's as simple as that. Yeah. There's very little yeah. obedience. I mean, I know you do some obedience, but there isn't like really little these days yeah and like you know i went through two months of hosting my family here so the, there was people coming and going and at the same time there were dogs coming and going because i don't i didn't really stop working so mm. dogs were there and all for these dogs it's like they come to a house and there's strangers there and and different kids and people but I brief my family. I'm like, with this dog, you don't do this. You don't do that. You don't call them. You or you do this or whatever. Mm. And everybody listens to my rules, which are quite simple, but yeah. very strict. Yeah. And this is how you can have like six dogs and like 14 people in the same house that don't know much of uh, each other without yeah. any incidents, you know. And and I'm not going to shit on obedience because obedience is really important. But yeah, you do need obedience. Of, yeah, Let's put that out there. Obedience. It's not like you don't need yeah. obedience at all. And like if you can join an obedience training club and stuff, 100% I support that. But that is not the one thing that will, you know, make your dog be a good dog. There are so many things that can, you know, enhance your relationship with the dogs. Yeah, uh, that don't need to be so strict, that don't need to be so, you know, uh, yeah. intense. And I think that's quite important to to mention that, um, because you made me thought, think of this. It's like, sometimes people contact me or they join a group class or obedience club because they have issues at home. Like the dog is jumping or the dog is pulling on lead or something, some type of behavior in the house, like he's overexcited that is not going to get solved at a group class. Or pulling on lead might be, yeah. But well, it's not going to get solved in an obedience class. If your dog has an issue coming off the couch, that's like you can go to obedience club for two years. That might still be an issue because mm -hmm. roundabout turns are not going to teach your dog to resource guard. Yeah, I'm not making fun of the obedience club. It's just, it's what it is, right? At least that's yeah. what I, that's what I think. No, and I get. I tell you, I I love obedience, and in fact, I work in an obedience club, uh, mm -hmm. on weekends, and I love it there. But yeah, I can see how beneficial it is for a person and a dog to do something together and build their bond and and Definitely. that. But if yeah, but if you like, you need to do to have that. It's for me, it's the relationship. It's not the sits and drops. It's like yeah. the way you relate with your dog. So, so that thing you can have, you can have that without very strong obedience. You can have a very good relationship with your dog mm -hmm. and a dog that is absolutely not trained. That is perfect for you. Yeah. Perfect for your lifestyle. That's it. And uh, like yeah. your dog doesn't need to have fancy tricks to be a good dog. I think yeah. that's the, the main message of this story yeah. and don't follow trainers that make you feel like shit. Yeah, um, let's say that again. <laughs> um, I I do want to show this quick clip. Uh, can I share my screen? No, no, no. How do I do it? Desktop two. Share. Can you see it? Wow, I can see it. Mm. <laughs> uh, this is a really cool Instagram account. It's the leader of the pack, Las Vegas, and he actually made this video, which I think came out at the same time that we came up with this idea to do this podcast. Dog owner who bought a harness for your dog. Who hurt you? You should really be ashamed of yourself. You're in a position to help educate and empower people, yet you choose to disrespect them, belittle them, and insult them. And this is not the first video I've seen of yours where you're disrespecting dog owners. You know that's a sign of insecurity, inferiority, and a lack of self-worth, right? I think it's a blessing and a gift to be able to truly help people. And it's trainers like you that cause dog owners to be reluctant to reach out for help out of fear of being judged and ridiculed. And even when they do reach out, they're reluctant to give truthful answers to questions out of fear of being judged and ridiculed. I hope that you can learn to approach people from a place of wanting to help them and be of service rather than ridiculing them and making them feel bad about their actions and choices. To be Right. I think that yeah, I love that our main message i'll do it <laughs> okay yeah because... i really love uh i really love what he says about you know like if you want to help people well stop making <laughs> stop making them feel like you know they're doing the wrong thing that's the whole it. judging thing yeah that's mo most of the time when i i start my session and i see that people people some people know what they've been doing wrong and they know you're gonna tell them that that's what you've done it wrong yeah but 
that's when I really try to be empathetic. Like, I'm not going to mm. come and point my finger at you like, of course your dog is shit. It's because you're shit. You know, like, where is that going to take yeah. us? Or the whole, yeah. oh, yeah, this is your fault that your dog does yeah. that. Well, it happens. Yeah. There's no need to or start pointing the... it out. I think you chose the wrong breed. Oh, um, my. Yeah. I was like, well, I've got yeah. the dog now. So this is where we are like it's no point like if, if a trainer does that just find a different trainer man because yeah. it's no point if a trainer goes and just starts hating on all your choices like what are you gonna do return your five-year-old labrador because you chose a labrador no of course not this is the labrador mm-hmm. you got yeah German shepherd so, yeah. husky you know yeah. um yeah i feel yeah. like that's that's what we wanted yeah, to talk about it. It's a bit good, of a good trainers make you feel good exactly <laughs> that's that's the thing and good trainers make you feel like you can ask questions and ask for help and, without feeling and, like oh my god yeah and that you you're gonna get through this you know like the trainers here to like you know hold your hand or like light light the path you that's know it. and we can do this together not not like throw stones at you and like try to catch up with me that's <laughs> it you should not feel yeah. guilty watching certain videos online. Yeah. You're most probably doing everything you can for your dog. And if, you, if you're if you not, then you probably know it, right? But if you think you're a good dog owner, you probably are a good dog owner. For yeah. sure. All yeah. right. I got to go and train some dogs now. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Thanks, guys. A little bit of a different topic than usual. Have an awesome day and like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. See Don't forget time. we're on Spotify as well. Yes. Check out Spotify and yeah, Apple Podcasts. <laughs> All right. See ya. Bye. Bye.